Alrighty. Okay, so it's brand muffin here. I got Zilby. Hello. Hanging out. Yep. And uh, thought it'd be interesting because uh, I've generally kept up more with the meta in season four up to this point, and Zilby took a what two month hiatus from pretty much. I mean, point. I took a well, yeah, I took a two month hiatus because I was just home and I couldn't play at all. And then, aside from that, past like six months have just been very on and off. So, yeah, not not much season four play. Yeah, but so, you know, we've got two different uh, potential points of view, which I think will be interesting for us to you know go over the patch notes and just uh, see what the hell is going on. Jesus. Anyway, so just going from the main uh, smite smite fire page and uh, the patch notes are right up at the front. And we'll just start yep. at the beginning, I guess. Um, are we starting with skins or like map balance? Do you, do you really want to? Do you really want to do skins, or do you just want to actually talk about the technical stuff? Because the skins are. Bad I mean, I was some of them. <laughs> some of them. <laughs> but what is there to really say on the skins? Like, yeah. Kai Junpo, like great. Foxy Lady Diva, it's fine. Star Wars reference, cool. Uh, Cupid is just fucking Cupid. Uh, Kronos's face scares me. Kuchu Lane looks like the Hulk. Okay, we're recovered. <laughs> Sweet. So, emotes. Eh, Summer of Smite. Let's pass that. Project Olympus no, is going to be really cool, I think. <laughs> um, but we we don't need to talk about that crap. It's just, uh, you know, graphical improvements. Which should be I nice. mean, I still have so few hopes for it because it's still using Unreal Engine 3, but, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, well. I'm it, curious it, yeah. how much prestige levels will actually be a thing. Like, am I just already level 160? Because like I've played a lot in the past. What is your games played time? Do you know? Oh, I don't know. Probably. I mean, sure, yours is higher at this point because you've been playing for the last couple of years. Like, yeah, sure, but like um, I play. Where can I? Very do I check on Smite Guru? Or... Yeah, we could probably do that. Okay. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I went to Please what was my favorite cheat? Really? Okay, I've got seven. <laughs> At least on Smite Guru, I've got 707, 770 hours, basically. Okay. I've got 890 on Smite Guru. Uh, you're, you're a little higher than me. So, uh, well. Well, so. I lied. Apparently, I have played more. Um, anyway. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm curious if all those hours will equate to just an instant 160 or if I'll still be in, like, the 120 range or something. Yeah. I'm, I'm assuming at, at this point we're probably at that higher end of things but i don't know probably yeah i mean like they could make it like a really difficult ranking system like who the fuck has gone to the highest level in overwatch literally no one but you know whatever i, I don't really care much about level it's just sort of like a look how many hours i've played stat yeah um but anyway on, on to uh this. map balance yeah map balance so so uh, yeah you you, you don't you haven't paid that much attention to uh, what's been going on in Conquest, right? Well, I mean, I have got a sense of it. So basically what their aim is is to make it so that the early game has much less impact compared to the mid and the late game, um, which is at least what they're aiming for. Um, and I definitely think that that's a good step in the right direction, at least for me, because in all of Season 4 and some of Season 3 too, really, like early game has just been dominant. Like I've noticed way more games than in the past have just been like, all right, well, for the first 10 minutes, we'll play, and then after that, we already know what's going to happen because there's no coming back from this or we're already going to win. And I've never been a fan of that. I've always done better in the mid and late games, so that's honestly part of why I haven't enjoyed Conquest as much lately. Um, so I'm, I'm glad to see them taking a step towards making late game great again. <laughs> I, I think I also like that general idea. I don't know if the way they're doing it is the best. And, and some of these changes seem a little on the high end, like increasing health almost double on some of these uh, minions and decreasing the uh, XP by like, what, 20, 25%, which is, you know, going to affect some gods more than, or some roles more than others. But, uh, you know, since I'm a fan of uh, first deaths, I think... Uh, damping that a little bit on the uh, early games would help me. Oh, yeah. You know how it goes. Uh, but more specifically, what about the uh, adjustments to the objectives? So Towers and Phoenix, well, Tier 2 Towers and, and the Phoenix, there's pretty hefty jump, especially on the Phoenix. Like, 
a 50% health increase. That's like huge. Well, you could definitely see that's going to push games a lot longer just because it's going to take longer to take down those towers and take down those phoenixes, and especially because the phoenixes will just come up again. It allows for later game teams to kind of make a comeback there. What I also see it doing, though, is that a lot of comps that have high uh, in-hand DPS, so like teams with like Artemis, Soul, just all those really high in-hand attacks are just going to be destroying these towers now. And the health increase is going to it's going to stop certain characters from really doing damage to it, but it's not going to stop like Apollo. So it, it, it's a mix. It's a really weird... It's a weird way to make the game go later, in my opinion, especially just like because of how it affects gameplay. Yeah. <clears throat> I think the uh, respawn health is going to help a little bit, too. So you can't just... I'm like, okay with the respawn health. I think the respawn health is kind of fun. I like the, just the, having the Phoenixes respawn at a higher percent, because I've always felt that like once you lose a Phoenix, like the game is almost over. Just yeah. like, it's so hard to come back. Um, but... I, just the tier two, just the straight health bonus doesn't seem like the right move to me. And also just on the jungle camps in general, I like the D the XP decrease because I do think that makes the late game a little bit more potent, and especially with the goal fury. But when you start to increase all the health of the jungle minions, that makes those late game gods that have trouble taking out jungle minions at the beginning of the game much worse because they're not going to be able to kill them on their own. They're going to need help. Yeah. So... Most kind death. of, yeah, it's a little bit of a mess. Except for Bakasuri, he'll have a nice little easy time because he just needs to get them down to like fifty and then just eat them. Nom nom. Um, <laughs> so buff to Bakasuri. Have you seen Have you seen uh, Baka's uh, adjustment yet, or you didn't get to? That? Uh, they decreased this cooldown on his ulti. That's all I saw. Okay, they also uh, changed something about his eat minions. So okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll, we'll, get, to we'll that. get to that. Yeah. So siege. Siege. These I've not looked at at all. Yeah. But I, yeah, let's, let's yeah, screw this. Let's bypass that crap. <laughs> clash, joust. Uh, really quick. Clash, 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 clash and joust. Uh, do they really mean <laughs> XP spooling? I don't think they mean XP. I think they mean gold, right? Gold? I don't know. Um, They mean. Gold. I don't know. Well, they said gold for one, they said XP for the other. That's weird. Because I thought the. I think, I, spooling. You, know, like, you don't just gain XP for nothing. You gain XP specifically from minions and whatnot, right? I don't know if you gain XP over time. I never really thought about that. I don't think that. so. And I think, the, always... uh, I think the Clash uh, 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 gold spooling used to be six. So, I don't know. Whatever. Not not all that big of a deal. But um, a it's little bit Clash smaller. and Joust. They're not balanced game types anyway. I know. <laughs> I like them. Oh, God. Oh, here we go. And now right. the main Ready? attraction. Ready? New items. <laughs> sort of, sort of happy, sort of. Yeah. What I'm do you sad. think? I'm, I'm saddened by this. I mean, okay. It's a good thing that hunters can no longer use hasten because I always thought that was dumb. And it made hasten impossible to balance because hunters could use it and then others couldn't. Um, but. <sighs> hunters just abuse crap, right? Whether it was Golden Bow, which Golden Bow was great for, you know, Merc. And things like that, right? And, you know, hunters just took it over and like started blowing out the hunter meta in like solo lane and mid lane and wherever else you know they wanted to go. Pretty much, which was BS. So that they, was I my saddest sort of, meta because yeah. it brought Artemis into the meta, but then I didn't want to play her because she was OP. <laughs> and oh. um so I do think having one on the in hand does help it a lot, and it's basically just old hasten to some degree. I mean, it's giving you physical power instead of penetration. Um, and, yeah, but the rest of it's pretty much identical. Um, so I'm fine with that. It's not really that great on a lot of gods, just because, like, especially because it was mostly useful on hunters to begin with. I usually like to use Hasten more than the average person on melee characters. Like, I started out playing Nemesis with Hasten, which isn't really recommended. But now that her slow isn't as good, and her ulti isn't as good, maybe it'll be decent. Um love to see that it's probably still not good um i mean what, but what do you then, think that trade-off is with uh the additional physical power but no 10 flat penetration anymore um it's just straight worse to be honest like it penetration is going to do more early game when characters have less defenses 
and it's going to do more late game because you're probably going to get a lot of physical power from other items. It's just it's just a worse stat. Um, it's still not terrible because early game you do get more power on some abilities if they have high scaling. Um, but that's about it. It's just not as good a stat as penetration would be. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, the magical version, the ring. Um, so, obviously, people are seeing this as a big nerf to Freya because it's only affecting it for four seconds rather than it can be refreshed infinitely, <clears throat> um, which is true. It definitely affects her a lot early game when she does have to sort of stick on target to kill them because she can't really pound out all that damage super fast. And aside from that, it's also just the stats aren't quite as good. The 50 magical power is actually pretty nice because that's a decent amount of power. Um, the movement speed is slightly less. Um, but I'm mostly seeing this affecting your early game because late game, you really only need four seconds because by then you're already having either burst the entire opponent down to like nothingness or you're like working in some other ability you're going to swap to your ult or something. Um, but I definitely see it being a lot worse early game. Um, I don't think it kills Freya. I don't think this is what makes Freya bad. If Freya's bad right now, there's probably a lot of other factors that are contributing to that. Well, I, so I was talking to Game Geek and uh, Prism earlier about all this kind of stuff. And, you know, like Freya was like, you know, at the beginning of S4 was like OP S tier, right? Right. Uh, people are going crazy. Like even the even the pros, uh, Barracuda and all those guys were going crazy just because of the uh, added early pen. You know, and, and Hasten's one where you usually would get it first or second item until you know the price increase went up to twenty six hundred gold, and that was a little tougher, right? But right. now it loses that that penetration. You That's get the true. power, but Freya's Freya's general scaling on her two main abilities isn't the greatest. It's it's okay, but it's it's not amazing, you know. That's and true. and what you're talking about late game, you say it 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 hurts her early game, but it maybe not the late game as much. Before her cooldowns, you know, if she gets like one or two like ten percent cooldown items, whether it's like shoes of focus or Pythagoras piece or things like that. Her cooldown meant that she would be being able to blast people for six seconds every, you know, with a with a cooldown of like nine seconds at that point or something like that, right? And now she's going to have to wait another 30 seconds in order to be able to do that. So she's not going to be able to spam and spam and spam, which is maybe fine because that was an, a crazy OP portion of her kit that people would often complain about but at the same time like that's all her kit has for her so i just i, I don't know i i think it sort of hurts her early game uh that that 10 pen really hurts more than you know giving her a little extra power and then on top of that just the uh um i mean i would uh, agree with that i'd say i didn't i didn't realize that her uh cooldowns were getting that low and that she was able to spam it that often i mean i'm not playing Freya that often. She's not, like, one of my mains. She um, should be. She should be. Well, not anymore. <laughs> Damn it. <sighs> yeah. um, but in any case, I mean, that's definitely an advantage. I think in the pro scene, being able to burst out, generally the fights aren't lasting as long, especially there. You're just seeing a lot more, like, quick engagements. And what, especially because they're buffing Heavenly Agility, you're probably going to be seeing that with the upgrade helping Freya a lot especially in, like, those scenes, because they'll just, near a late game, they'll just be able to pop, like, one of them and then another of them, and then Freya's just being um, attack speed buffed, per, or uh, attack speed movement penalty buffed pretty much permanently. Um, but, yeah, it's definitely not as potent as she would have been late game with the old Fatalis. Don't get me wrong for that. I just think it having the lack of pen early game is going to have a much bigger impact than yeah. that late game. Yeah. But, uh, okay, so the other two magical, standard magical potential ADCs. You got Sol and Poseidon, or not Poseidon, uh, Sol and Kronos. What do you think about this for them? Um, well, I've always thought Hazen on Kronos was overkill for, like, several reasons. I, I don't know. He, he has a built-in Hazen, like, really. Um, well, he, he used to. He used to. 
Oh, did they get rid of that? Oh, yeah. S4. Oh, no. Yeah, okay. they got rid of it, which was why there was a big old uproar. All of a sudden, it went from uh, Kronos and Freya, you know, pretty pretty strong overall to Freya being S tier and Kronos being nerfed and Soul being nerfed. So there, okay. there were a lot of upset people about that. But Didn't realize that Kronos lost his haste. Um, in that case, uh, it's probably a pretty good item to have on Kronos. Kronos... Doesn't really need to stick to people as much as Freya does, I would say. So he probably is not going to be quite as, as affected by the uh, decrease. I'm trying to think. Would his would this cooldown be affected by his ulti? Because it's an item cooldown. Ooh, that's a good question. I, I know, like his his abilities are reset, but I don't know about this. That would be really interesting. Probably wouldn't be because I, I don't think beads or anything gets reset. Yeah, no, no, so, probably not. Probably not. That's yeah, that's not great. I, I think they need to reduce the internal cooldown. Thirty seconds is just way too punishing. I think like fifteen or ten. I I, I, um, I think well, if it's ten, then then basically it's it's it seems like a nerf because it's got a cooldown, but in the end it really doesn't because it's up almost at the same time that Freya's abilities come back up. You know, and she's usually yeah, not going to be attacking ten. when her abilities are down. Ten is probably a little bit too much, but I mean, I am still getting nerfed to a large degree. Um, twenty, I don't know, 50, maybe twenty or fifteen, maybe twenty. Twenty is too strong. Keep it there. Um, <laughs> not the best balancing logic. Uh, and then, did Soul also get her hasten removed? Oh yeah, on her one. Yeah. Wow. Okay, everyone's just getting her hasten removed. Um, I don't think Soul needs it. I don't think she needs to keep up with people as much as Freya or Kronos does. Um, I thought it was a nice bonus on her one when she had it, but I didn't find myself using it as much as I would on, say, Freya or Kronos. Um, she already has the slow on her two. Um, she's just fast in general. She can get up close to people and still get out because she can just become ethereal. I, I, don't, I don't see it being very good on her, especially in its current state. But Kronos probably pretty solid. Kronos is probably pretty solid. I, I couldn't, unless it's severely underpowered, which you'd have to kind of test in some games to see. He's probably fine picking it up. And even if it's underpowered, he's probably not terrible with it. It's yeah. just there might be some other options. Well, there are other options he's going to have also. So <laughs> we'll be looking well, There's always other options. You can always just do yeah. ability Kronos. Yeah, I mean, it's true. Fine. All right, let's skip over Hunters. Um, that's enough um, crying over Hazen Vitalis, I guess. Yeah. We don't need to see a second tier item. <laughs> <laughs> Atalanta's bow. Um, right. So this one, I mean, it's probably good for like some characters. It's just the stats aren't great. There's not. I mean, your entire the real benefit of this item is just juking potential, which is pretty good. But um. I mean, you have to be really good at juking and really good at hitting shots fast to be able to use it. And once you're at that level of play, even if you're juking really well, they probably should be able to hit you anyway. So, I don't know. The, the stats just aren't there. 30 physical power and 20% attack speed for 2300 is just piddly. Yeah. I was thinking there might be some use for specifically Medusa um, just because yeah. of her, I mean, her sidewinder strafing. Fine. It comes to mind, but you'd have to really be good at juking. It, it would just require so much just to get out of it. You could probably just get another item and just be easier. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I expect this this item to change in the next couple patches. I would too. I don't think it's going to get picked up. Um, anyway. I, well, th waves. Think about it. Think about it this way. Uh, maybe some assassins. So... Uh, Baka, for example. Baka, Baka picks up a Hasten Katana and then in addition picks up Atalanta's bow. And, you know, he's he's got his weird passive with the, the added move speed and whatnot already. So, you know, this would be able to get him to jump between enemies, take one down, get to the next, take another one down. Uh, that would be, like, pretty insane, I think. But I mean, you're forgetting that he spent 5,000 gold almost and now has... 50 physical power and a bunch of attack speed. He's got a lot of like, uh, true. He does have a decent amount of true damage, but like still, that's just... Yeah. 
Unless, unless you get a hit, that's just not enough damage. Like they can probably just out damage you. What about even while you're like speeding around them? What about Kali with her uh, uh, Shinsai's and uh, you know her just quick attack progression and everything? Again, I can see I can see both of them picking up pace and katana just because that one I think by itself is enough to sort of give that effect. I don't think Atlanta's bow plus that is gonna be worth it. You're getting a lot of the same stats. Yeah. It's just kind of inefficient. I'm just trying to think of like uses, possible uses for it, but probably, yeah, it's probably not being picked up. Uh, you know, whatever. I, I think it's overshined by Hazen Katana, and then on Hunters, it's just not good enough. So, I don't know. All right. Anyway. Toxic Blade. Replacement Witchblade, because now that item doesn't really exist. <laughs> so, yeah, well, Witchblade does exist. It's just funky and different now. But this one's well, funky also. This is this is the It doesn't have anti heal. It doesn't have anti heal yeah. anymore. So this is the new anti heal. I, I would call this one Witch Blade, honestly. And to call it the new one Toxic Blade. But yeah. whatever. So personally I see this on solo laners. Um, yeah. as a as a counter item if you're a basic attacker and facing a basic attacker. That little ten penetration early is sort of nice, the attack speed, movement speed, and a little bit of health. That all is sort of pretty synergistic for an early game uh direct counter. You know, after you after you like third item maybe, if you are um I don't know, Erlang or or Osiris or you know, somebody along those lines and you've 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 already built your physical protection or magical protection, whatever. Whatever. You know, just the uh up to 60% reduced healing with all that other stuff is solid counter, don't you think? Yeah. I mean, I can definitely see this item being viable on solo laners, um, warriors, assassins, and also just people in the jungle um, because that extra 100 health plus the movement speed. Yeah, gotta, gotta account for the movement speed. Like, it's, they're solid items for basic attack junglers. Um, but yeah, it, it seems like a decent item. Um, the 10 penetration is pretty nice. It definitely is just like I'm going to get in here, fuck you up, and you can't heal now. Um, but it's not so offensive, just because as that 100 health, that it gives you some extra survivability too. It, it's a good balance, but it's not going to go that well on someone that's just going straight power, because that 100 health is going to be much without any protections. Yeah. Take it or leave it. I don't know. <laughs> well, we'll see. It's it's it doesn't seem too bad. Shaman's Ring. I hated Shaman's Ring. It, it, it seemed like underwhelming. Uh, I don't really know what its old passive change. was. <laughs> the old passive was basically just every time you uh, hit a god, specifically a god, not minions, gods, uh, with your basic attacks, um, it would give you 2% health and mana back. Or something something along those lines. That is correct. See, this is this item was made for basic attack Ymir. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> I wanted to use it on Freya. I just didn't like it all that much. Here's the difference. Freya would get back like 10 health every time you hit someone. Ymir would get back like 50. <laughs> so. Freaking Ymir. Freaking hit is tough. <laughs> Especially with Apollo. Anyway. Dude, Apollo Ymir is terrifying. Um. Okay, so dealing 100 damage to new enemy god. Uh, dealing 100 damage to enemy gods gives you a stack, and then deal 10% additional damage to targets. Okay, that's that's pretty good. So I mean, straight kind of weird. straight 10% damage, but that's before mitigations. So it's not true damage. It... You just got to consider that you know the protections right. are going to come into effect. I mean, you're doing 10% more damage. Just think of it as your damage number multiplied by like 1.1 and then has to go through everything else. Yeah. And so it shifts from being like a, a basic attacker's functioning item to, with the movement speed, being nice to help, you know, mages that may not have escapes or something like that um, be able to get away a little safer because it, it all the different items are... They, there's a ton with movement speed these days, right? So almost yeah, everybody's going to have like, more than the base 18%. Every fucking item we listed so far is movement speed. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Like, what the hell? When did this become a thing? Okay, anyway, go on. Yeah, anyway. So oh, that's interesting. I, I think, you know, you could you might see some specific types of uh, 
mid laner mages and be able to pick this up and just do a straight 10% damage um, across the board. Because, like, look, 100, 100 damage, 50 stacks, that's 5,000 freaking damage. Even a freaking Guardian is going to be able to get 5,000. So it's right. really, really easy to get the full stacks pretty quickly. So, I mean, 5,000 damage you have to account for is it is also only the enemy gods. So you can't get off like minions or anything. So you do have to be like actually poking the enemy god to get it. Yeah. But, um, I mean, I like, how quickly do you get 5,000? Like you, you look at like the uh, after game stats and, you know, if you're, if you're doing decent damage as a mage, you're, you're what? Anywhere between 20 and 30,000 at least. Yeah, but think about how much of that damage is concentrated around the late game when you've already gotten all of this power and you're constantly in team fights doing damage. Like yeah. during the early game, you're not gonna get that five thousand damage that quickly unless you're a god like Agni, Thoth, Vulcan, um, which it is does make sense why it would be for those gods. Um, I don't know. It, it's a cheap pickup. It's sixty dam sixty magical power, get an additional ten percent damage, which is good late game. Um, when you're that 10% equals out to a lot more power. Um, I see this as being sort of like a mid game ish pickup because if you get it so early, you're never going to build the stacks very quickly. Um, but yeah, 10% movement speed just seems kind of weird that they threw that in there. I'd rather see like 10% pen or something. But yeah, whatever. We'll, we'll just make everything movement speed now. Despite... <laughs> hey, Technoto is going to be really happy. Um... You weren't there for that one, were you? It was uh, Taco, me, and Technotoad. And uh, we had a little joust match, and we just decided we were going to go all movement speed items, which was awful, but sort of funny. Anyway. I mean, I made that one blog post about the Sanic Bamana strat, so I support it. <laughs> <laughs> like, Bamana worked for so long. It worked until the late game. I started getting blown up by Hunters. Anyway, um, Age of Samulet. No longer cleanses roots or slows, just a nerf. I mean, Aegis is pretty strong. That's fine. Um, what do you, okay, wait, wait, wait. Before, before we go into this, what do you think about Relics overall? What do you think about, like, just the general idea of them? Just Relics, like, as a mechanic in Smite? Let me, let me, let me state my position first, or my general feeling, to give sure. you an idea of, like, like, what I'm thinking about it. Like, to me, the the gods have all their individual abilities, and that's really what defines, you know, when you're choosing a god and and playing them and using the different skills in a timely manner and all this kind of stuff. I I personally feel that relics at this point have been too functional, and it takes away because because it's something that all the gods share you know, depending on what they choose. And we started seeing where everybody's picking up Bracer of Undoing and crap like that. And all of a sudden, everybody has a self-heal that, like, prevents them from freaking dying and allowing them to get away. And I don't like when these little dinky things can have such a huge effect on, on a game when it really is and should be about the gods and their abilities. That's my general basis now uh, and i'm not saying like i dislike all of the relics but i i dislike how strong they can be okay um i can see that perspective i mean back when i was playing majority of the time you the relics you'd see picked up super frequently was heavenly agility or just sprint or greater sprint back in the day uh purification upgraded greater purification and ages and Basically, those were just there to sort of counteract Smite's shortcomings, which was that CC was way too strong, so you had to get Purification Beads. And usually those CC abilities would link into strong attacks, and you could usually counteract some of them with Aegis if your Beads were down. And some of them you could just get away from with Sprint. And it was just to sort of counteract all those things. They're all just, get me the fuck out of your abilities. And I do kind of like the fact that because more relics are viable now, you can at least use them for different things, and you can sort of sacrifice those escapes to be able to do new things. Right. And the fact that relics are now sort of forcefully thrust upon you 
Um, if they're going to have them in the game at all, I would kind of like to see more players use them because you had such an advantage back in the day if you just bought beads because nobody picked up relics until like late game. And just having beads at all, like in the first 10 minutes, was a ridiculous advantage. And it probably shouldn't exist because somebody just got in the habit of clicking something in the shop for like 300 gold. Um, but I do see what you're saying. It's kind of boring to have every character do sort of the same thing, um, especially with things like Sundering Spear and uh, specifically Bracer of Undoing. I think Bracer of Undoing is kind of a dumb Stop relic it. design. Um, but I think that's more of a problem with individual relics, not the system as a whole. Um, yeah, more, more specifically, just Brace of Undoing, because that was so impactful on so many characters. Um, and should really be more of a situational item, and maybe Sundering Spear, but they just nerfed that one, so I'm kind of okay with where it is now. Thank you. Good explanation. Thank you. <sighs> so... What do you think of Aegis? No longer cleanses, roots, or slows. Again, I don't think I need to do that. The whole point of Aegis has always been to just be, hello, I am no longer taking damage. That's that's really all it's for. Exactly. Um, when you start to make it do other things, then you're kind of like, should it really be doing those things? It's not really the point of the item. <laughs> um, so I, I think it's fine. I mean, if you want to cleanse roots or slows, use beads or use heavenly wings or, yeah. That's what it's called now. Why Why is it called wings? They're feet. Um, anyway. <laughs> wings on the feet. Wings on the feet. <laughs> I think there's a name for that. They're like Hermes sandals or whatever. I don't care. Um, but yeah, I, I think it makes sense. Um, Blink Rune's getting sort of a nerf buff. Um, I don't know. It has flat 100 second cooldown. I think that's fine. Um I don't know if it needed the nerf. I don't know how much blink was getting used. Um, it is kind of nice to be able to take 10% reduced damage. Not that useful if you were kind of running away, but, you know, whatever. Whatever, blink. Good for well, you, Amir. I mean, uh, people. you know, King Scuba just uh, commented to me, uh, you know, it's it's sort of a an indirect buff for somebody like Anubis if you're doing, like, uh, blink on him, you know, just to close distance <laughs> and... Uh, Oh my gosh, Wink and Nubis. I don't you know, think like... Wink and Nubis is going to end the meta because of 10% reduced damage <laughs> yeah. for two seconds. No, my I'm... biggest problem with it is it's such a short amount of time, and usually the first second after you blink, like people are so caught off guard, they're not going to kill you anyway. So it's really like one second to reduce 10% reduced damage. Uh, uh, helps helps Anubis catch somebody, though. does help He's Anubis. Chasing. He's the only character I can think of where it would be, have a high impact, and even then, it's like it's not even that high. It's like a little bit impact. Yeah. I mean, a 10 per 10% reduced damage is, is a little bit. It's not amazing, but it's only for two seconds. And when you're catching somebody off guard and then probably unleashing something to begin, you're not likely to expect a lot of incoming damage at that point. It's I see it more being a factor if I blink on Anubis and he just immediately ults me. Because then I'll take 10% reduced damage from his ult. And maybe I can run the fuck away or something. I don't know. It's well, it's a weird amount of damage reduction. It just seems too unimpactful. But anyway, that's, it is is a little funky. It's such a small change. And I'm not going to stick with it for too much longer. Um, Bracer of Undoing. Bracer of Undoing. Can we just say screw this one and freaking bypass it? I hate. This I want. One. I don't even know what the changes were. <laughs> <laughs> so it it you know that 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 health and mana regen. You know, like like bringing the health back from whatever damage you took over the last five seconds. Um, that's basically a little buff. It's a little buff from fifty percent lost to sixty percent lost, but they're decreasing the uh, three seconds on all abilities currently on cooldown. Um, well, see, but that's only putting on the upgrade. That's not that. That's not that much of a nerf. <laughs> it isn't. And this needed a way bigger nerf, or just not to exist in the beginning. Because now everybody, like I said, has self-healing. And that's, yeah, to me, that's just stupid. Like, gods are designed, and some of them have healing, and some of them don't. And that's how it should be. Yeah, I don't, I don't think this item should exist. 
<laughs> After just like looking at it long enough, that's just screw this one. That should be like it's, it's it's off a, the screen. That'd be a really cool ability to put on one god, and just have it on that character. Like have it put it like rework Chronos and like put that on him. Like that'd be cool. But having yeah. it on everyone just it, no. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh, let, let's move on to Cursed Dog. I don't want to stay on this any longer. <laughs> yep. Um, oh, that's a weird effect. I don't like it. I feel like that's... It's funky. I don't like the mana co- or the uh, cooldown change because I don't want to be thinking about some item active when I'm shooting off my abilities and worrying about their cooldowns. And and that's part of what I'm talking about. That this ability just changes the fund- fundamental basics of specific gods. You know, like you rely on Hawa with with his little water spell, not water spell, the other one, the blast, uh, with that really, really quick cooldown. And all of a sudden you can't use it. And okay, so good. That's a freaking hard ass counter, right? But the gods need to have some basic functioning. And when you throw in crap like this, it's it's not natural and you see the thing and you don't know because maybe you're blasting all your abilities and you just don't know how it's going to affect you and and when you right. don't have a feel for the game you know in in whatever situation it is it just it it reduces the efficacy of the, of the game as a whole that's what i feel yeah i mean like, i'm okay with some items doing things to other players like when you do a movement speed them, reduction like hurting them Hurting them is fine. I mean, like, honestly, Sundering Spear as a principle is not that bad an item. Um, I think it's much better now that it's percentage instead of flat damage. Because um, I think that makes a lot more sense. I don't want to be killed by an active. That just seems wrong. Um, but, yeah, something like having your cooldowns in, like increased, it's just you're not that likely to notice that you've been hit by such an active. And even if you are hit by an active, you might not know if it's like Cursed Ankh or Horrific Emblem or just some ability. And just being, do I, being able to identify that with Smite's mechanics for being able to identify that quickly enough to not use an ability is just... I sure as hell can't freaking recognize that crap. All yeah, too I, I much stuff going on. There's way too much going on in the game just for that effect, I think. I think that effect is just poor. Mana costs increased? Okay. I can see that I'm someone using more mana. Like, healing reduction, fine. But let's get at the cooldown thing. That's just terrible design. Um, I, I'm done with this thing. <laughs> it's making me upset. Heavenly Wings. It gets some of its function back. Um, yeah, so again. Again. It's just what it was before. It's yep. now a good item, unlike what it was previously. Because if you don't have slow immunity, it's just worthless. Because most of the time you're using it is to cleanse the slow and get the fuck out of there. Most of the time people slow you is so that they can hunt you down. That's when you want to use wings. It's just that's just it. Okay, I'm, I'm done with this item. It's good now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, horrific emblem. That's a large cooldown increase. Um, it's the upgrade. Keep in mind it's the upgrade. So basically, what they're doing with the uh, with all the stock versions and the upgrades is they're equalizing so that the cooldown doesn't change right no that makes sense um i mean i guess what it's unnerfed all of them it's just 90 second to 130 is pretty large even just the difference is larger than even some of the other ones so um, but, but it's got this straight 20 percent less damage so it's got 20 percent damage mitigation so it's like yeah. slightly stronger spirit row passive i mean it's pretty decent i mean it's good for countering hunters mostly um it's kind of a f- turn the air though between that and cursed Onk. i mean like cursed Onk, obviously if you're doing ability stuff it's going to have it more of an impact on a uh, ability users but the healing reduction is so good against hunters and I'm, I'm curious which one people will pick up um yeah i don't know what else to say about that one like, it's not I mean, that change. It's 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 like pro level where everybody in a team fight is going to get something different so that all the effects are stacking at the same time, you know, 
you just got to have a lot of right i mean you can get both of them although having the slow stack is kind of overkill i mean ideally you have one player with one one player with another but you might want something like a magical shell on someone or like phantom field if they have someone with lots of barriers etc etc and see this Um, this crap is all freaking crazy i don't i don't know magic shell is interesting it's like a geb geb shield right yeah pretty gives much you a straight health shield that's, so, that's basically what a geb shield is yeah i mean at max rank it's a little little higher when you're at, you know like level 20 and everything it's i think a geb shield provides up to like 600 something maybe but this is uh 100 plus 15 yeah. per level you're getting a little over 400 right it's, you're basically just get shielding everyone in an area. I don't see the upgrade being that great because block stacks are good, but once you already have the get shield up, it's like kind of your people probably aren't going to burst down the get shield all that fast, even with the hunter shooting you. Um, a hunter can get rid of that shield and one hit it with a with a nice little crit, and then on top yeah. of that, you get two blocks. It... <sighs> Is it really worth upgrading though over getting like items? just is it really like by the time it's a late game you're probably gonna have all your upgrades probably, anyway probably, probably not but it's it's again one of those things like look block is on what two gods right athena and bologna they haven't had, uh, and now you're else giving yet. a freaking you're you're giving a, a relic the same type of thing like they're, they're meant for those specific gods and now you're just potentially giving it to everybody this is just another one of those stupid things Okay, to be fair, though, Block is on Athena for literally no reason. She does not need that passive no. whatsoever. Well, <laughs> she would be so fine without Block. <laughs> it's sort of nice if she's if she's like dashing and then she's taunting, for example. Oh, yeah, but then like she's going to be immediately literally. taking some damage. It would be nice on literally any Guardian, though. Nothing about Athena really requires Block, except That's for right. maybe her taunt. I don't know. And I guess you get fired basic attacks at you during your taunt. So that kind of makes sense why they add it to begin with. But then once, once they realize that almost all of those basic attacks just miss anyway, like, it's whatever. Um, but yeah, ma- Magical Shell, definitely an upgrade. Um, definitely like seeing it do the Geb Shield effect rather than just sort of like a damage mitigation. Um, then obviously they're comparing it to a Meditation Cloak, which I'm glad to see. Um because that is actually a great upgrade, especially for characters that are running meditation a lot of the time. Um, because usually they're the ones that like the uh, magic or the uh, mana buff or, and the uh, mana restores so that are usually firing off a lot of quick abilities. And just having that cooldown decrease by one second is definitely going to be a good impact for them. Um, but that's that's really all there is to say. That's just a buff. Yeah, I like it. I like it. <sighs> Phantom Veil. So no basic base level Phantom Veil. No more uh, crowd control and knock of immunity. Okay, whatever. That just makes this really situational. It's always it's always been situational. It's okay. I'm going to counter Odin. I'm going to counter Mir's Wall, and what more than that? Not much, right? Yeah, but if you had like a lot of characters that had like strong crowd control and a lot of knockups on their team, like you can counter looks with it and stuff like that. Oh, now I never use it for that. Upgrade. <laughs> In any case, now you need the upgrade to do that, and that just makes it even more situational. So now it really is only used for like Odin and Ymir, and that's about it. Um, I don't know. It's a. Uh, I don't think they needed to do that. I don't think Phantom Veil was seeing enough use for them to justify that. Yeah, but but now look look what they're doing. They're they're the new effect. They've got fifteen percent reduced damage. We just freaking saw that, right? Like uh horrific yeah. horrific emblem, right? Twenty percent less damage. And now you've got this Phantom Veil with fifteen are, are they running out of ideas of different effects to do? And so they're just gonna throw more like damage increase or damage mitigation it seems like that's a, like a general theme going on um well they're definitely running out of ideas for effects because literally every item they've released this patch has movement speed <laughs> just just putting that out there 
Um, there's definitely more things they could do. I don't know. I mean, like that was always meant as a defensive item, and just now I think it's the only reduced damage upgrade item because Magic Shell no longer does that. Um, so the fact that's the only one kind of makes it okay in my eyes. But at the same time, I don't know. It's just, it's just like, what's, when would you ever buy that item if you're not fighting an Odin? Really? I mean, the upgrade is pretty good, but you're not generally upgrading them super quickly. So for a while, you're just stuck with this useless fan of Bale. Basically, they made the tier one too bad. Okay, all right. Ah, <sighs> shield thorns. The phrasing on this is terrible. Is it implying that people can't life steal as much now if you're using thorns? Is that is that all it is? Yeah, basically, uh, it should have said enemies enemies see reduced life steal fifty percent of their of their normal, pretty much. So they not only take the damage that they're dealing out at a specific percentage, but now the lifesteal that they would have gained from it is also reduced. I think actually all they needed to do was change it from enemies can lifesteal to enemies now lifesteal from the user for 50% of the total lifesteal. Just saying can sounds like a buff. <laughs> Something about it. Um, I mean, that's, I mean, that is a buff did it? to the people that use thorns. Um. But because there was nothing, look, I'm I'm like looking at it, and, and there's there's nothing about uh, it affecting life steal before that point. So yeah, 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 no, it didn't. It would just reflect the damage back to you. Um, I mean, that's it's good. It's good for countering hunters with it. That's for sure. But then, um, I mean, like, it's pretty so, easy to see, and like, you know, normal players these days are just going to see it, and they're just gonna, like, okay, I'm going to stop for a little bit, unless you're almost dead, and I can burst you down safely. See, but the sadness is that it's a huge nerf to Anubis. That's the true that's the true sadness with this item. Because <laughs> Anubis is going to ulti, and he either has to hit you or he's going to die. And if he sees you pop thorns, usually he would just take the 50% damage and accept that he's probably going to lifesteal 50% from you. But now it's just going to be like him destroying himself. <laughs> and you love your Goobus. I do love my Goobus. <laughs> Uh, your uh, your your Goobus jungle, I like it. <laughs> it he's so bad. <laughs> he's a bad character. Um. Anyway, in any case, it's a buff to Shield of Thorns, so it's gonna be better against hunters now. You're probably gonna see it more picked up on solo laners. Um, maybe some assassins, but they're not gonna usually live long enough to really justify it. Um, Guardians might pick it up. I mean, definitely like Kuzumbo, but aside from him, I'm not Athena. sure how long. Yeah, maybe and, Athena. Uh, you know, since she since she uh, automatically makes people attack her, it, it's always yeah. Functional. Well, I mean that that one's always easy, um, unless she has block stacks, in which case it won't do anything. <laughs> just just <laughs> saying. <laughs> um, Centering spear. You, you see how you see how block is a problem on Athena. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Um, I, okay, so Sundering Spirit, that one I love the changes to. I think that's a huge betterment to the items. I think it just doing flat damage was just problematic in so many ways because it was just it was useful all the time. It's especially useful early game, um, and it was too useful for just finishing off enemies. And now it's really just meant as an engagement tool, which I think is really what it was meant to be to begin with. Um, and now it's just straight fulfilling that purpose to its highest degree. So it's definitely a nerf. Um, before it was a better item. But if you're if you were using it to sort of like just jump in there, tap it out on some enemies, and then quickly just attack them, then it's definitely still doing that purpose. Yeah, I think what it's supposed to be best. So yeah, Kudos I agree. I agree. I like it, and and the the percentage means that it's not like way more effective against squishies. Yeah. No, I mean percentages mean that. Yeah, because before squishies would obviously be affected by a ton more. If you're attacking a hunter, or if you're attacking like an assassin middle laner who would just annihilate them now you can go in and target the tank and he'll still take that extra damage and i'll take the 50 percent. so it might be worth even targeting tanks now which is kind of nice um i mean you're generally not still trying to burst them down so it's probably not worth it but regardless it's it's still a 
better item versus them. Good. Okay, teleport glyph. Teleport glyph, teleport glyph. That's a... Uh... So, first level, you can only teleport to towers. Upgrade uh, re retains the cooldown, which is the longest cooldown in the game, and then allows people to teleport to wars. That's obnoxious. I don't think this item was OP enough for it to justify that, but okay. Whatever. Only, only for really good, well meshing teams that have a lot of synergy, have a lot of communication, and use that as a normal strategy for taking down objectives or this or that. Oh, no, I mean, I've used teleports of wards plenty of times. Um, what I see is that this item is going to get upgraded closer to mid game. You're going to see less use of it that way earlier in the game. Usually when you're teleporting towards early in the game, it's because you placed wards in your jungle and you can either get a gank on your solo laner with your assassin by teleporting to a ward instead of a tower or just teleporting to a ward in the middle of like a gold fury fight, which you're probably less likely to do now. Um, it's just... It's just reducing its functionality and how interesting the item is. So and it was already I don't, pretty, pretty I don't like that change. Right? I mean, like, it's still going to get know used solars, just teleport to tower. Yeah, but like, how many people actually use that? I, I know it was I don't a know. lot of solars. That's pretty much it. Because it makes us that you just go back to tower, back to a base whenever you want, pretty much. Yeah. Hooray! About it. Yeah. Item changes. That's... Item changes. Okay, these are the existing items then. So the other ones were all the cool. brand new ones. These are now the standard ones. How many of them got movement speed? We'll have to see. All of them. <laughs> really hope. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Rangda's Rangda's mask. So this is one of those masks I don't know about. Oh yeah, yeah. Lono's mask, Rangda's mask. All the uh, all the interesting ones. I don't know who was picking up Rangda's mask. I don't think almost anybody was picking it up earlier. It was one of those things where it didn't it. give you much of anything to, to start. Like, okay, so we look at it, and the base stat is 5 MP5. That's it. 5 MP5. It was all about the passive. It's pretty so, shit. <laughs> so now what they're doing is they're reducing the number of stacks. 10 stacks total. I think it, it, like, it used to be 16 stacks. Okay, so now it only takes 10, so it's like 5 kills, 10 assists, or some weird combination of the two. And so uh, you at, at max stacks, you get 10% movement speed, 10% CDR, and 15 pen. 500 gold, that that's pretty freaking, item. that's cheap. 500 gold's cheap. And for a jungler who has a really strong early game, that expects to get kills or you know you know teams in in casual matches or whatever where they can usually stomp with uh you know good communication and, and teamwork um they can pick up rangda's mask and they can pick up boomba's mask and then all of a sudden they get that added move speed and the cdr and the and the, and the pen and so that's this is a very strong early game for relatively cheap but you you have to utilize it. You have to get those kills, or it's okay. So still I'm, sitting there I'm thinking it. from this item is that if you're a strong early game character, if you pick up this item, your early game is going to get worse just because it's not a strong item. You're spending 500 gold on it, and the other juggler is probably not going to pick it up if they expect you to win the early game. So what you're doing is you're kind of making your early game worse, and you what you risk doing that is you have risk your character's early game not ending up being as good. And by the time it gets a mid-game and late-game, you're playing a character that doesn't have a strong mid-game or late-game. And even if you get the stacks for it, you're still playing a character that doesn't have a strong mid-game or late-game, so you're probably going to be as good as the other character during mid-game and still worse late-game. You're probably going to sell this item. It's a 500 gold item. Um, yeah. So it's just hard to justify it, because 10 stacks, like 10 assists or 5 kills, it's not going to come that quickly. Like, you're probably going to be 10 minutes in before you get the pen. Um, unless you're just annihilating them, in which case, why do you even need Ronda's mask? Like, you, you're you annihilating them. <laughs> so, 
here's 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 a different take. How would you make it justifiable? What would you change about the item to make it justifiable? I would also just give it better base stats and make it not quite as ridiculous of a passive because an early game god still wants those base stats and it might be nice to have a decent mid game rather than focusing on like I'm going to have an incredible mid game and just not have a good early game. Like I'd rather have like a decent early game and a decent mid game but if this I can just sort of level that out that might be nice. It might be nice to have that option if you're worried about the mid game. But right now it's just like you're throwing away the early game and getting a decent mid game, but you can probably get a better mid game by just picking a better early game item anyway. Yeah. So, I don't know. It just seems a little bit too too extreme right now. You're extreme, Zilby. <laughs> Radical, man. Frostbound Hammer. Ray okay, so um, so it's it's specifically a nerf to hunters. So hunters are right. seeing a lot of freaking nerfs because they've been pretty powerful, right? So hunters are really strong. Yeah. So you're just seeing basically a slight reduction to the movement speed slow when hunters pick it up, but hunters didn't usually pick it up to begin. So it's a it's a to me it's a minor minor nerf. It, it's it's not a common thing to begin. So whatever. So yeah, it's a, I don't it's a good see change. this item that often. It's um, a, a slight nerf to maybe like Scotty. Uh, I've seen her pick it up, but yeah, not not a whole lot of characters are picking up this item that are hunters anyway. I, I'm not going to worry too much about it. <laughs> yeah. Next to Rage and Lono's mask, they're just talking about the uh, the evolution. You, you you know what that part is, right? It's it's just uh, once an item that has uh, stacking to it reaches max stacks it looks different once it's evolved hooray right it's so. aesthetic but look look <laughs> lono's mask lono's mask what's the start watchers lono's <laughs> anyway <Shut> up, <laughs> i heard that i was like i, I was already literally can't afford that <laughs> <laughs> i saw the picture of all my potions and my <laughs> I might be able to afford it. I was like, no. So awesome. So <laughs> I already awesome. have my potions. I didn't <sighs> buy that many potions. I only bought two of each. Could have bought three. Could have bought four, I think. Um, anyway, Bumbas. Bumbas. So Bumbas is just, it's all relative to the new jungle because now they have a lot more health. So 10% basically is what the old 15% was. So it's not really a change. Um, yeah. That's that's all there is to say about it. I mean, the jungle is still going to be harder because um, the minions have more health, and Bumas isn't going to be helping you with that extra fifteen percent. So just take that into account. It's still going to be basically doing the same thing. That's true. That is true. But um, because they have more cross. health, you're you're also taking more damage because it's taking longer to clear. Right. I mean, just assume since the jungle has more health, it's just going to be more difficult in the jungle. Yeah. Yeah. Assume that items won't help you with that. <laughs> um, in any case, Bancrofts, just a straight nerf. Um, it's a straight it's nerf, and, and just understand that it, you know, when it was 2300, it was providing 20 base lifesteal and 20% max additional lifesteal when you were at low health, 25% of your yeah, uh, they you know, max health. increased the uh, passive back from when I was playing the majority of the time. Um, and it was strong back then, so I can imagine it was probably really it's stronger. It's been considered glasses. pretty freaking strong right now so this i think this is a good move um i, I still see it's probably gonna get a lot of use because it's still a good item and even with 15 percent life steal and 2400 that's not such a big nerf that it's gonna be completely out of there but i definitely see other life steal options being viable or at least more viable now um yeah yeah that's, that's really minor minor change overall it. Because, I mean, the, the, the passive, uh, I believe, they didn't mention the passive changing. So it, it will still provide an additional 20%, um, right. up to 20%. So 35% versus 40%, still pretty good. I don't like the next one. Dynasty Plate Helm. They're minor nerfs, but 30 to 25 physical protection and 15 to 10 penetration. I used to love this. Love, love, love this. And it is it is a nerf. It's not a huge, huge nerf. But it's already like a bridge item. 
Was this item like good enough to deserve a nerf? The last time I played, it was terrible. Oh, it's it's <laughs> it's great for specific gods. Um, so uh, some mid laners would pick it up if they were struggling, you know, early game with regard to potential getting some junglers or things like that. And just the the fifteen flat pen when most gods only have thirty uh, magical protection without items. Right. I mean, that's pretty strong. pretty big. So I, I understand the need, um, but I don't like it. I don't like it because I like it on my, my uh, Bacchus. It's a super weird item. Um, I don't really have anything to say about it. Yeah. I mean, if it was strong, then the, this is just a straight nerf. There's not like any intricacies to it. They're just like, oh, look at these stats. Now they're less. <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, Celestial Legion home. I'm assuming this one was not as good. I... I never used it personally. I'm sure others did. I never did. I don't know. So okay, C current current stats: sixty magical power, thirty physical protection, twenty MP five, and the passive as it currently stands. And he got affected by your ability heals gains twenty percent increased physical and magical power for five seconds. So it was a really really weird passive. So basically just the reverse of Lotus Crown, which is probably yeah. a better item. Yeah. And it's it's cheap. 2,050 gold. Cheap. So Dude, the thing about Lotus nice Crown counter. is that when you're usually healing when you're trying to be defensive, and this is giving you attack power when you're trying to be defensive, so that's just kind of uh, just weird. So just now, a weird concept. It, now it's like every two seconds you receive a stack of 10 physical protection. So it is... Yeah, uh, well. I think it's just one stack. I remember reading this before and being like, what the fuck? How many stacks can you hold? Or I could be but wrong. But then they say stacks. They say stacks. But yeah, because you're going to gain that stack multiple times and they'll get removed multiple times, I think. Oh, it's really confusing and I don't. I still don't okay. like the item. It's stupid. Whatever. It's a, it's a better passive because at least not going to be picked up on non-healers, which is like at least like the majority of characters um vampiric trout i actually didn't look at this one at all so um, it loses the magical lifesteal which was low four percent uh it gains okay. physical protection which is very effective at the start of the game right so uh less minion damage less uh you know physical jungler whatever type damage or you know i i guess if you were magical adc Screw magical ADCs now, right. I guess. Apparently, uh, if you're a magical ADC against a hunter in a duo, uh, the physical protection would help. But the new passive basically makes it so that instead of having to have a last hit to gain the health and the mana, you just gain it by hitting any anybody with the ability. So, right. Okay. You know, Ra throws his his beam, and he just immediately gets some additional healing but it's a really big nerf in terms of the potential six health three mana and before it used to be 10 health and eight mana for the last hit so it, it it's really significant but it's easier to actually have activate i mean i don't like the mana change because i feel like they could have at least upgraded to be proportional um like six and four would have been fine because you, you can pretty easily just clear with two abilities, um, especially early game. But it was kind of nice to have that extra man sustain, especially during the early game. And making it six and three just makes it really hard to do that. Um, I mean, you can at least get something off of poking the enemy god, but that's only one enemy. So, I, I mean, know. in the end, you know, Vampire Trout hasn't been used much. It's, it's basically been Soulstone if you're being aggressive or you know, you're using uh, Sands of Time for the CDR. And, and or the, Vampiric the, Shroud. And the MP, or Zobie. MP5 was nice. Or what? Because I don't know what I'm doing. Or Vampiric oh. Shroud or Zobie, because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I was fine. I did fine with Raw. Um, it's probably you, not the best you, you time. I'm fine with anybody you use. Uh, it's, it's fine. Um, I mean, the 10 physical protection is definitely nice, but you're generally, I mean, you're using on magical characters, so like, you're in mid lane, that's not going to do a whole lot. 
you can get protection for the minions and I guess a jungler if he happens to pop by. But yeah, it's just not that useful early game. Yeah. I just don't uh, decide. Yeah. In the end, I don't see it being picked up. Whatever. Uh, how much? How many? Oh my. We still got a bunch more. Jeez, man. All right. So we are at one minute. Or one minute. <laughs> one hour, <laughs> eight minutes so far. We'll see uh, how, we how many people fast. actually watch this. But um, so let's let's uh, let's continue on. Let's we can uh, go jump faster. over to Witchblade. Witchblade. Um, okay, so Cheap. builds off Adventures Blade. Same, same, actually, same price. Same price. I mean, it's just a straight dueling item now. Is what it comes down to. I mean, the life steal is pretty nice. The attack speed is decent. Health is sort of a weird item still to get on hunters, um, but it's still good. It's good for dueling. It's really what it comes down to. Um, not really a whole lot else to say about it. I guess you could still pick it up on like a warrior or an assassin, but it's not going to have as much of an impact as it once would. So um, basically, I mean, like in a lot of ways, it's like Aussie, right? Aussie has about the same attack speed. It's got the 15% life steal. Now the, the passive on Aussie's life steal uh, increases the, if you're low health. But on a base level, it's sort of like Aussie. It doesn't have the power. It adds a little bit of health. And then it reduces that attack speed. So it is a almost like a hunter against hunter counter. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah, actually, it might replace Aussie in a lot of builds now that you mention it. I wasn't even thinking about that. Um... I mean, the fifteen percent life steal is pretty solid. Yeah, so it's just I, it, it is an additional. So it's it's not just you get an additional life steal option, right? You had Blood Forge as a late game, usually late game. You had Devos as the sacking. You had Aussie, and now you got this. And I could definitely see a lot of magical ADCs picking this up because it's actually available to them, unlike Aussie, um, because the life steal is magical or physical. Which is interesting. Yep. yep. Um, so you can see Freya, Kronos, Soul probably picking this up if they're playing ADC. Um, but aside from that, it's pretty standard stuff. Um, Wicked Blade, I have nothing to say. It's just sad. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> Relic Tiger. Um, I hate I hate everything associated with relics and whatever. Receive 30... 30 second cooldown reduction instead of a certain percentage was 20% before. So, yeah. Okay. What, whatever. Whatever. Um, it's it's going to make certain. It is kind of annoying because it will make certain relics stronger than others, but yeah. that's going to be weird to balance. Okay, so here's here's where I have a major gripe demonic grip. Like, you're already nerfing friggin' Freya, essentially, right? And the only one that really standard picks up demonic grip because a lot of people are going to go more cdr soul or cdr chronos or whatever and maybe get like they used to get like a tel telkines telkinas whatever how you pronounce that right so you're right. directly just nerfing freya more than anybody else and oh great you're adding five power when her scaling's not that great <laughs> and you're decreasing the attack speed more because it used to be 25 Right, it used to be I think twenty five. They reduce reduce it to twenty, and now it's fifteen. They're adding the movement speed, so okay. So you're you're obviously combining the demonic grip and you're combining the uh, hastened ring. So now you get fifteen percent between the two movement speed instead of ten percent, which is great, I guess. I mean, it's definitely a nerf. That's it's all I have to say about it. It's not that much of a nerf because it is only. 5% and it's supplemented by the extra 5 power and the extra movement speed, but it's still a nerf, is what it comes down to. Didn't need um, it. I, didn't, I don't think it needed it. Yeah, I probably didn't. I, I don't think that item needed any changes at all, honestly. It probably could have stayed the same and everyone would be worried. Um, so, yeah. I don't know. Maybe their internal testing was like, oh, this item's so much better with these items. Whoa. <laughs> um, anyway, tell guides. Um, this is just no longer even the same item anymore. I don't know what this item is used for anymore. It's like... It's weird. It's not that no much attack power. Speed. No attack speed. It's got the move speed. It's got a little bit of power. So it's sort of like that new item. Um, what was that? 
Damn it. Damn it. Let me go back up. Maze ring. Uh, oh, Shaman's ring. Shaman's ring had 60 power and 10 movement speed and the passive. Right? So it's sort of like that in the base. But it's got that weird passive. It's still got a stacking. It used to have a stacking of 10 power up to 5 stacks. Um, right. Which was great for somebody like Soul when they're, you know, doing whatever. Now this is interesting, and I'm not sure. When you use an ability, you gain a stack. Now, does it affect, uh, like, ticking abilities? Does it affect DOT abilities? Do you, do yeah, you probably can't... wouldn't. You don't think so? So it has to be an individual ability. And so they'd have to basically blow their entire ability base. And so, you know, what they're, what they're saying here is that uh, uh, allows low cooldown or combo mages to stack up a large amount of power. So, yeah. but but they're, I don't know. It yeah, I don't effective. see it's going to use that often, just because like the only characters you can really build this on is like Poseidon. maybe Chaga, maybe Habwa, Poseidon, only because for the old then, old like, setup. Yeah, but you get the. Uh, was every time you deal damage with an ability, does that mean if I do a tick damage to it with an ability, do I get a stack? Can I get full stacks just with world? And that's that's yeah, that's what I was asking. I'm like, like, do you get it or do you not? And that's gonna be really the determining factor. If I can get full stacks with whirlpool, this item's totally worth it. If I get one stack with whirlpool and I hit them with an ulti, that's not worth it at all. Yeah. Um, I thought you were asking whether or not the like damage increase would apply to like the stacks. Like, if I get if I do the ability, then get twenty power from that. Would that twenty power apply to the rest of the ticks? Um, and you know what? That's a good question too. I don't and think I, I wouldn't it expect would. it to. I wouldn't expect it to. Because when you cast ability, you know, say for example you cast it and then you go, Oh crap, I need to level it up. You level it up, it's it's gonna it's gonna do the earlier levels damage. It's not gonna do the right. new levels damage that you just leveled up while it was counting down. So whether or not those ticks will actually give you stacks is really the important factor here anyway, because otherwise like if you can use that on Nubus and be fine, that's fine. But if you have to be like Hubwa and Changa and like just like a couple other characters that really dish out damage that quickly, like even for them, it's probably not even worth it. Um, anyway, these are all just tier twos. Then we get to Voidstone. Voidstone, I hate the changes. I think this is terrible. You know, <laughs> I, I hate everything they're doing in this item. It was before, it was basically the only. There's one other item. There was another defensive magical item. I, it was like Stone of Tal or something. Um, what was it? Stuff Foul. 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 Foul, whatever. Um, that was the only other item that was really magical power and magical protection. So if you were laning against another magical laner, or if you were in solo lane and you are laning against a magical laner, you could pick up this item and you just get a little bit of power and a little bit of magical protection. If all you want was just a touch of magical protection to sort of round out your defenses, like you got a strong physical protection item, a decent health item, you could round it out with a void stone, but now you're kind of just stuck with stone of foul. It's really the only one left. Um, what this does do is it makes it a good guardian item, but they have so many options for just magical protections to begin with that it's just, it gets outshone. It doesn't really have a place with that current stat. Um, yeah, I guess it didn't it didn't really need the uh, magical power reduction or Well it's the magical power reduction and then the uh 150 health because you're it's basically just becoming more defensive. But the whole point of Voidstone was just to sort of tip the game in your favor. Like if you ever read a fuck I don't remember his name. Um but he did a bunch of articles on like different spy items and what if you looked at the stats for picking up a void stone versus another mid laner, like you'd be doing so much more damage to them with the protections reduction because it's basically just a straight 20 flat protection reduction, which is still crazy, um, especially early game. And then you, so you'd be doing a lot more damage, and then they'd be doing a lot less damage because they are suddenly dealing with so much more defense from you. You have 60 magical protection versus your base 30. So it just, immensely tip a mid lane fight in your favor, but now you can't really use it for that because it just doesn't have enough power and stats to really justify the purchase. Um, well, I, I don't know. I, I still see Guardian use for it 
and not even so much for their own damage, but you know when they're teaming up with others that deal magical damage, uh, it's not like it, it it lost its its you know passive magical protection reduction, you know, and it's still got pretty solid magical protection itself. You know, and, and it's, it's not cheap. that I. It's not that I think it's a bad item, it's just like it had a very specific use and no other item provided that use and now it's gone. And I hate seeing like a unique role like that just disappear. I know. I know. Maybe I we'll know. see a maybe we'll see a slight adjustment or something like that in the next patch or two. I'd like that. I'd like that, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Genji's. Um, Genji's. So what they're doing is they're just sort of rounding out these magical defense items and making them better. Um, by giving them more power, or yeah, sorry, not health more, to more health. Um, I think in the case of Boystone, that was a bad move. I think in the case of Genji's Guard, it actually is a good one. Um, I like whether what took Genji's Guard. I think it's just a better item now. Um, I remember looking through the uh, magical defense items recently, and I was just like, none of these have health, and this is making me sad. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was pretty much like Pestilence, Bulwark, and uh, Hardward, and that was about it. Um, so seeing these items just be able to buy this one item, they'll have like a somewhat defensive role, but have some offensive capabilities is kind of nice because it's good to be able to like buy something and just have like, oh, that's cooldown reduction, and you'll take less damage from abilities now or only hunter's guard. We get these passive mitigations and passive internal cooldowns. Um, yeah, that, that's about it. And I, I, and I don't know. I, I think almost more than anything else, it's not even that that passive cooldown reduction or the or the added health which is nice the added health is absolutely nice um that mp5 boost makes it in a way you know because i always use to use like breastplate of valor and genji's guard interchangeably depending on if there are more physical gods or more magical gods in you know arena or clash type situations or something like that um and now the the mp5 makes it you know because valor has such a huge mana pool, like 300 mana, right? So right. this 40 MP5 sort of balances it out that way because it it you it just wasn't enough to justify it as a decent breastplate of valor counter or alternative. You know what I mean? I mean, I would see it being better just as a uh, like to just go along with it. Like you could pair them together. And, and, and you can action. now because it, it at least between the two of them there's a little bit of added health you know yeah. breastplate well, I mean, doesn't like, have the health still... so I was always looking for something magical to be able to balance that out so it's like if I went breastplate of valor do I need to get heartward amulet I don't really like heartward amulet all that much you know but it does have you know the aura for helping everybody else and it has the 200 health and there's not a lot of other things besides bulwark which is such a very strict personal item so, right this, this um, is something sort of in between i like it i mean it does give you at least some health it's not like an amazing amount of health but it's more than you'd expect something with those stats to give you i suppose yeah oni so did you ever, i I've, i'd never pick up oni i don't know if that makes uh, me like a horrible player or something like that but i'd never pick it up very rarely. I, usually I'd go with Genji's Guard if I was going to choose between the two. Um, just because I don't usually have that much need for like crowd control reduction, I guess. Um, at least with the characters I play. I, I would see this being decent on like warriors that just sort of want to uh, you know, get in the fray of things and still playing as a highly magical team would be pretty useful. Um, I don't see it being as helpful on Guardians. But yeah, that's just me. I don't know. <laughs> I think we've done enough items. I think that's good for now. Yep. Gotta gotta go into these fucking gods. Uh oh, actually, you know, all these characters. Hold on a second. I'll have to I'll have to edit this part out. I hear one of my babies crying. Hold on just a second. Okay, well, you should just make a second video now. This is items now on gods. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, should I just stop it now anyway? I mean, and and then I'll just restart it. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. Hold on just a second.